Welcome to the Cheating Secrets channel. We hope you enjoy today's story. My wife once cheated on me. Once was enough. I'm sure she thought she had everything under control and was very surprised by how I handled it. The unfolding events were a typical story. Married for 15 years, things had become quite boring. We grew apart, living in the same house, under the same roof but in different rooms. She distanced herself from me. At some point, I noticed that we were no longer partners, no longer confidants, no longer lovers. She left too many hints. I did some investigating and digging. It turned out she had an affair, at least an emotional one. She started complaining to me. It was normal, and I had stopped listening to her complaints and mockeries over the years. Now, with this new evidence, I not only heard her, I listened. She was unhappy with our marriage. She had fallen out of love with me. It was clear to me. If I had tried to bring up the fact that she was wrong, that we could fix our love, that I loved her and we could restore our marriage, she would have just distanced herself from me even more. She just looked at me, and in her eyes, I saw another bridge between us crumbling. To hell with all this, I said to myself, finishing my beer. I replayed our last argument in my mind over and over again. I was trying to find a way to win her back. After all, she was mine. It seemed, I thought to myself, that every time I tried harder to get my wife back, she drifted even further away from me. I sat up late at night, allowing my wife to sleep in our big family bed while I nursed my wounded feelings. Somewhere along the way, my mind kicked in, and a new way of thinking burst through. Why did I argue with her about what she was feeling? Indeed, why? At that moment, I realized that everything my wife had been telling me was true. A truth I couldn't just ignore or talk her out of. She was sharing her feelings with me, and here I was, arguing with her, telling her she was wrong, that she wasn't really feeling those feelings. How foolish was that? How can you tell someone they are wrong about their feelings? Well, it stopped right then. What she felt was what she felt, so why argue about it? So what was I feeling? Strange. No, actually, it was strange because, as I sat in the darkness on the couch thinking about my recent relationship with my wife, I realized that I too was unhappy. I was no longer sure that I loved her. I was in love with the idea of still being together and being married to my loving wife, but that wasn't reality, was it? This moment of epiphany shook me. It took me some time to put everything together, but now I had a plan of action. Whether it worked or not, at that moment, I didn't care because I now knew that what I was doing, and what she was doing, wasn't working. What does this mean? The definition of insanity is trying the same thing that didn't work over and over again, thinking it will work this time. I smiled, threw my beer bottles into the trash bin, and decided to sleep in the guest bedroom. All this was part of the plan. Frank? Linda opened the door to the guest bedroom and flicked on the light switch, depriving me of sleep. Why are you sleeping in the guest room? I squinted against the light until my eyes adjusted to the bright light. I stayed up late, didn't want to disturb you, I said. She looked at me, then shuffled off to the kitchen for some coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker, as I was blessed with the ability to wake up and be alert immediately. I jumped into the shower and prepared for the confrontation. Today, my step was springy. Linda sat across from me in the living room. I was in my usual position on the sofa. Linda clenched her fists, she was agitated, and I could feel she was about to say something. Frank, she began, this isn't working. I feel disappointed and lost, and I don't think I love you anymore. I sat and looked at her. She paused, then continued. Frank, I know we've been together a long time, but I think we need to get a divorce. The word hung in the air. I smiled as she nervously looked at me. That sounds good, dear, I said. She blinked. Frank, did you hear me? I nodded. Yes, yes, of course, I heard you. You feel that it's not working, you don't love me, you want a divorce. I agree. Uh, do you understand? Now she was bewildered. I stood up and approached her. I knelt down in front of her. Linda, I can't change how you feel. You don't love me. How can I argue against that? Can I tell you that you are wrong? No, you don't love me. Well, to be honest, there were many times in our life when I didn't love you either. If you feel you can no longer live with me, well again. How can I argue with that? Linda looked at me as if I were insane. However, deep down, I saw that she nodded to my keen ability to understand that what she said was true, and she appreciated it. Wait, you said you didn't love me? She asked. There were times, just like for you. She was a bit shaken. All the time she had played this little scene in her head, she never expected that I would react this way. I liked seeing how her emotions were reflected on her face. 
Well, I said, anything else? I need to leave tonight, so I would like to settle this now, if you don't mind. Are you leaving right now? I stood up and began to put on my jacket, preparing to leave. Uh, no. Frank, where are you going? I'm leaving. I think I'll hit a few bars. I think I might start looking for someone else instead of you right now. I waved goodbye to her and left her sitting in the chair with her mouth open. I stopped at the nearest bar. There, I ordered a bourbon and sat at one of the tables away from the crowd. I took out my mobile phone and initiated another part of my plan. I called a coworker. Jessica worked with me in my department and was known as the company Gossip. Playing the role of the poor, abandoned husband, I solemnly relayed to her the conversation I had with my wife, particularly how she had stunned me with her request for a divorce. The reason I called her, and not the real reason, was that I was in the bar, drowning my sorrows in whiskey and might not show up for work the next day. I could hear the wheels turning in her head, since Jessica and I occasionally flirted at work, and she was single. The next thing I remember is that Jessica invited herself out with me for the evening under the pretense of looking after me and being the friend I needed while I was in such a vulnerable emotional state. I met Jessica at a bar that I knew my wife and her friends often frequented. Was I concerned that someone might see me? No, my marriage was apparently over. My wife didn't love me, and frankly, I didn't love my wife Linda at the moment either. Jessica looked good. She arrived quickly, dressed attractively and seductively, perhaps hoping to reach me before someone else had a chance, at least that's what I like to believe. But when she saw me, she was somewhat surprised that my body language and mood did not match the news I had relayed to her over the phone. The smile on my face didn't help either. Frank, what's happening? She asked, sitting next to me with a puzzled expression. I raised my hand and pointed to my ring finger, which was now bare. She wants a divorce, that's how she feels. Why should I fight it? I called the waiter over and ordered another drink. Jessica ordered her usual Cosmo. Frank, over the phone you seemed more upset. Jess, we've been unhappy for a while. I finally realized that maybe I don't love her like I used to. She wants this divorce, so you know what, I'm not going to fight it. She wants to leave? Fine, I'm not going to lie around, forgotten and unloved. Jessica took a big sip of her cocktail. She sat and looked at me. Now I realized that I was having an effect on this woman. Whatever my attitude, I noticed it was confusing her. Maybe we should dance? I didn't wait for her response, just grabbed her hand and led her to the dance floor. Frank, what are you planning to do? I held her closer to me. I'm going to give her everything she thinks she wants. I'm going to do whatever I want. Right now, I want to dance with you. In fact, I've wanted to dance with you for a long time. Now I can. She looked into my eyes and smiled. If you're trying to get back at her, I raised an eyebrow. Maybe. She pressed her whole body against me, feeling comfortable and warm. I'm okay with that, she sighed. We lost track of time. It was so nice not to worry about having to call home to tell Linda when I would be back. Jessica was fun, intelligent, and we flirted all evening. She was completely mine. She knew it. I knew it. But, I didn't take her home with me. It was really nice to know that someone wanted me. My wife had bruised my ego, but Jessica had bolstered it. Moreover, I would say that Jessica was a more attractive woman than Linda. We kissed in the parking lot by her car. I opened the door for her and smiled. See you tomorrow at work. She nodded. I made it clear that I just needed some fun right now, and I wasn't about to commit to another woman. In my not-so-subtle way, which Jessica understood, I was now looking for someone for myself. I'm sure that by the end of work tomorrow, all the women in the company will know about it. I would like to tell you that I am a calm man, but the truth is, I was looking forward to rubbing this in Linda's face a bit. Where have you been? Linda snapped at me when I entered the house. She was in bed, but as soon as she heard me come in, she got up to meet me. I put away my coat in the closet and started to undress for bed. I went out, I said. I told you I was leaving. Why should you care? I, Frank, I was a bit worried you might do something bad to yourself. I smiled at her. Linda, I know how you feel. I'm okay with it. You want a divorce, I will gladly give you one. I'm far from wanting to force you to live with someone you no longer love. I took my pillow and clothes for the next morning and headed to the guest room. Frank, Linda called out hesitantly. I stopped, shifting my things to the other hand. What? She looked down. She couldn't face me. I don't understand. I mean, you don't have to sleep in another bed. Are you suggesting that you will sleep in another bed? Move out of our bedroom? I didn't want to make it easy for her. She gasped and wiped away a tear. I, 
I didn't mean that. I mean, you can share the bed with me. That is, if you want to. If you don't want to. Well, I guess I could move to another room. She was nervous. The thought of actually moving out of her bedroom was something she had never anticipated. She held her breath in fear that I would make her do just that. I spared her the agony. Well, this bed is more comfortable. I'll stay here with you if it's not too much trouble. Her face brightened. Oh yes, that would be wonderful. I mean, it's no problem for me. Then it's settled, I said and tossed the pillow back onto the bed. She wanted to talk, but I was too tired and told her to go to bed. We would have time to talk later. Indeed, by the next evening, three women at work had made advances towards me. I even had a friend give me his sister's number. She was a widow and had been struggling to find someone to date. I arranged dates for the upcoming week with all four women, including another one with Jessica. I intentionally kept this evening free because I needed to talk with Linda. We needed to sort everything out. I suppose she needed to live her own life. I returned home and faced Linda. Carol saw you last night at the bar. She said you were with a woman. Who the hell was she? What were you doing together? Carol said the two of you looked very comfortable with each other. I could have exploded at her. I could have yelled at her, called her an easy woman for hanging out, talking to men, neglecting me, drifting away from me, but I didn't. I smiled and told her I would answer her questions after I change. She tried to challenge me, but I ignored her and went to change into my home clothes. Once comfortable, I noticed that Linda was staring intently at me. She was ready for a fight. Her eyes were close to tears, but her body was tense with anger. It was Jessica from work, I told her. I didn't deny it. I'm sure she thought I would start making excuses, but I didn't. What were you doing together? She asked accusingly. I looked at her and simply said, we were on a date. On a date? She shrieked. I nodded and continued to sit calmly. You have no right. We are married. What makes you think you can do that? I stood up, got a drink from the kitchen, and sat down again. She was still standing, staring intently at me, waiting for my response. Why should it bother you? I asked. She stared at me, mouth agape. We are married. But you want a divorce, don't you? She nodded, unsure of her voice. You said you don't love me, right? I said I'm not in love with you, she corrected me. And I agree with you, Linda. You're no longer in love with me. So why shouldn't I go and look for love with someone else? You want a divorce. You don't love me. What reason do I have to stay here with you? She sat down, actually slumped into her chair. What will people say? Don't you realize what that looks like? Now Carol is gossiping all over town about my husband dating some slutty woman. Don't you dare call Jessica a slutty woman. I growled. She was a perfect lady, and I was a gentleman last night. She knowingly went on a date with a married man. I call that a promiscuous woman. So, I said angrily, standing up and pacing in front of her. She's not married, and if she's a promiscuous woman, what would you call a married woman who knowingly dates other men without her husband's knowledge? Linda stared at me. She was speechless. I could see her thoughts working. How much does he know? She panicked. What does that have to do with me? She exploded. I just looked at her. Time seemed to stretch endlessly. I remained silent. She saw it in my face. I knew. Her body began to shake. HHH how much do you know? Enough, I shouted. Whether you slept with them or not, I really don't care. You see, my dear, this marriage was over when you decided to count me out. I'm not going to cry about it, I'm moving on. I'm going to take care of myself, considering I get no support from my wife at home. I got up and went to the kitchen. Dinner wasn't ready. I decided to make something for myself. She could cook for herself. A little later, she entered the kitchen and watched as I finished my dinner. I'm very sorry, she said to me. I put away the dishes and turned to her. I'm sorry too. I think you should know that I have plans for the rest of the week, so don't expect me home early. If you prefer, I can sleep in the guest room. She didn't respond. I went upstairs to go to bed. I decided to sleep in the guest room. I'm sure Linda had a restless night. I met Christina after work. She was a sweet blonde, about 35, divorced, with two children. We chatted over coffee and then did something really silly. I took her to play laser tag, a team game using safe laser guns and sensors to record hits. Yes, it was us, two adults against 10 teenagers, who all ganged up on us and kept annihilating us at the start of each game. Christina enjoyed it. I liked sitting and talking with her after we were killed, waiting for the next game to start. At one point during the last game, both of us were killed, and we fell side by side and pretended to be dead. I pulled her towards me while we were lying there and kissed her.
She kissed me back. Then we had a nice dinner and soon I walked her back to her house where we kissed goodbye. She said farewell to me before things went beyond kissing and she made me promise to ask her out again soon. I braced myself for another confrontation with Linda when I returned but surprisingly she seemed subdued. Hello, she said. I smiled and greeted her as I undressed after the date. It seems you had a good time, she told me. Her emotions were concealed. That's true, thanks for noticing. How was your evening? We talked. For the first time in months, we sat down and talked until late at night. I listened to her, and she listened to me. I have never had sex with anyone else, Frank. I swear to you, she confessed. I kissed a few men and shared my thoughts and feelings with Justin at work. He wanted more from me, but I wasn't ready. Linda, I'm sure we are both to blame for this, but even though you didn't actually have sex with anyone else, you still betrayed me. We were a team. I'm glad that you refrained from cheating on me before asking for a divorce. I really respect you for that. I should have listened to your feelings instead of arguing with them. Yes, she agreed. We sat in silence for a while. Frank, I'm confused right now. I don't know if I want a divorce. I smiled. Let me know when you figure it out. I'm not kicking you out of the house, and I'm not planning to leave anytime soon. Frank? Hmm, I was already up and about to go to bed? Are you still going to see Jessica? Yes. I'm currently seeing her, and others too. Do what you want to do. Figure things out. I need to do what's best for me. If we end up getting a divorce, well, then it wasn't meant to be. I headed to the guest bedroom. She followed me and stopped in the doorway. Frank? I turned to see her as I was taking off my shirt. Come back to bed, please. I hesitated. Do you think that's wise? Tears streamed down her face. I don't know. I just want you right now. I reached out to her and she threw herself into my arms and sobbed. She was confused. She didn't know what to feel. I carried her back to our bed. I held her as we fell asleep. Lauren was a good friend of mine. She was a fan and we always talked about the latest TV shows and fandom stuff. We were at a neat bar with live music, which she was eager to go to but none of her friends or dates were interested. That evening, I took her with me. It was fun, and although we had occasionally flirted at work, there was absolutely no chemistry between us as romantic partners. We had a good time, but we were just friends. That was enough for both of us, and I got home early. I pulled up to the house and found a car parked in the driveway. My jealousy briefly reared its ugly head, but I calmed down and reminded myself that whatever happens, happens. There's no point in worrying, right? I learned this from my psychiatrist while being treated for my fear of flying. Instead of panicking and thinking, oh god, I'm about to get on a plane, he made me shift to an excited and anticipatory tone. Oh god, I'm about to get on a plane, I can't wait. It took some practice but it generally worked in the short term. Not knowing what to expect, I repeated my mantra and opened the door to see Linda sitting and chatting with Carol, one of her friends. Frank, I didn't expect you to be back so early. Linda, Carol, I nodded at them. Carol shot me daggers with her eyes. She said nothing. Work finished early, so here I am. Do you need some privacy? Linda and Carol exchanged glances. Then Carol rose from the couch. I should be going. Linda, I'll talk to you soon. Linda walked Carol to the door. Carol gave me a disdainful look, said nothing to me, and left. Sorry for intruding, I didn't mean to interrupt your evening, I said to her. Don't be silly, Frank. This is your home too. Home. When was the last time she or I called this place our home? Have you eaten? She asked me. There were leftovers from what she and Carol had apparently shared. I poked at the food while she busied herself cleaning up the kitchen. How are you? I asked. She sat down. I'm okay, I think. I invited Carol over to talk, but she only confused me more. How so? She wanted me to kick you out, change the locks, and divorce your ass. Hmm. Well, my key still works, so I guess you didn't have time to call the locksmith? She laughed. Don't be silly. I had to explain to her that I was the one who asked for the divorce. After I told you that, what rights do I have over you? I left you, right? She looked intently into my eyes. That last part was a question she desperately wanted an answer to. I wanted to jump up and dispel her fears. Tell her that I still belonged to her. But I didn't. I said nothing. In the past, my assurances would have pushed her away. Maybe this new non-committal stance might have a different impact on her. Changing the subject, I blurted out, I'm afraid I have some bad news. My date for tomorrow night cancelled. Now I'm stuck with concert tickets. Maybe you'd like to go with me instead of another girl? 
Her face brightened. Oh, Frank, I would love to. I mean, if you want. I shrugged. Well, I could give these tickets to someone at work. No, she said decisively. I mean, I would be happy to go. Happy to go with me? She blushed and nodded. Are you sure? I asked. Yes, she whispered. I smiled. This could be fun. I broke the news to Heather. She was disappointed, but such is life in the dating game. Linda was dressed and ready to go when I picked her up after work. She looked good. She was dressed to impress. I was almost certain she dressed that way to impress me. I didn't know much about this band. Heather had suggested we go to this concert, so I bought the tickets. They were good. Loud, but good. I wasn't surprised when we ran into Heather. I saw that Linda was surprised by how good Heather looked, and she quickly realized that Heather would have been my date tonight. I apologized to Heather, and she looked at Linda. Heather, this is Linda. Linda, Heather was supposed to be my date tonight, but something came up. Usually, when I introduced Linda, I always called her my wife. This time I decided not to, and Linda noticed right away. Heather, it's so nice to meet you. I'm Mrs. Donaldson. She looked Heather directly in the eyes, and something passed between the two women. Heather was smart enough to apologize and said she'd see me at work the next day. Linda was seething with anger. She grabbed my hand. Frank, where is your wedding ring? I shrugged. At home. I took it off after you asked for a divorce. I don't need it anymore. Linda was once again at a loss for words. Honestly, it was fun to render her speechless. Frank, we aren't divorced yet. I smiled and focused on the music. Several times I went to the bar to refill our glasses. Each time, Linda watched me like a hawk. Every time I was at the bar, some woman would approach me and I would chat with her. I made one laugh and she even slipped me her number. Linda saw all this but said nothing. Actually, I'm not a ladies man. I can flirt a bit, but I've always been respectful and never pushy. After Linda asked for a divorce, I allowed myself to be free. I discovered I had a rather blunt knack for flirting, and now that my restraint was gone, I found I didn't need to hold back. I wasn't the handsomest guy around, but I always had the ability to be witty, and I found that women seemed to appreciate my humor and frankness. For the first time in a long while, Linda saw me in action. I think it surprised her, but she must have realized that the same tricks, moves, and flirts had once captivated her heart. Tonight, I think she remembered just that. She was silent all the way home. I was silent too. Once we were home, we began to get ready for bed. Frank, where is your wedding ring? I pointed to the sock drawer in the dresser. She walked over and opened it. Reaching in, she grabbed the gold ring and pulled it out. She looked at it, then at me. The weight of the symbol hit her, and her eyes filled with tears. It's yours now, I told her. I think you should throw it away or sell it. She looked at me. What should I do with it? She asked hesitantly. I think whatever you want. The ring is a symbol of our love for each other, our marriage. At one point, it was a shield, a warning that its wearer was unavailable to others. I highly doubt most people appreciate and recognize what this symbol means. I know that for me, this ring helped fend off other women. I hoped your ring would do the same for you. Ever since you decided not to live with me anymore, I think I no longer need this symbol to protect me. It only reminds me of what used to be. I looked her straight in the eyes until she met my gaze. When the time comes, you'll decide what to do with this ring. I approached her and closed her fingers around the gold band. She watched me and took responsibility. Frank? Hmm? I was just falling asleep when she called out to me. Thank you for the evening. I enjoyed the concert and spending time with you. Anytime, I drifted back to sleep. In the morning, breakfast awaited me. Linda had made eggs and bacon. She was an excellent cook, and I appreciated her efforts. I noticed that Linda hadn't taken off her wedding and engagement rings. I also saw her fidgeting with them as she ate with me. That morning, Carol called me at work. Carol, I'm surprised to hear from you. What can I do for you? Lunch today, 12.30 at Bohemia. She hung up, and I stared at the dead handset. I wasn't sure what to expect at lunch. I didn't know Carol very well. Linda had befriended her at work. She looked pleasant, but she had never been very friendly towards me. She was one of Linda's friends whom they often talked together. I entered the bar where I had invited Jessica that first evening. She was already sitting at a table covered with a white linen tablecloth, and she waved at me. Her face was tense and stern. Likely, this conversation would not be pleasant. As soon as I sat down and my order was taken, Carol fixed me with a glare. 
What the hell are you up to? Linda is in agony and you're pulling this stupid stunt. Dating other women right in front of her. For the first time, I felt myself blush. It was partly embarrassment, partly anger. I quickly shut my mouth before I could say something I would regret. I realized immediately that anything I said or did at this lunch would be reported straight back to Linda. She watched me as I regained control of my emotions. I spent a long time contemplating how to respond. Finally, I began to speak. Carol, how much do you really know about what's going on with Linda? I know her husband is acting like a complete idiot. She growled. People around us looked in our direction. Carol, stop talking nonsense. Answer my question honestly, and I'll answer yours. I have nothing to hide, do you? Carol swallowed and was relieved when our waiter chose that moment to bring our food. I sat and waited. Linda is confused, Carol admitted. So confused that she needs to see other men to sort out her thoughts? Carol blushed and took a sip of water. Linda has had her weak moments, Frank. I bet, I said sarcastically. We've been trying to help her figure things out, Carol replied. You see, my dear Carol, this is where I take exception. Why are you and your friends taking it upon yourselves to help her sort out her marriage? Carol was silent. Really, what business is it of yours? Linda is my friend. And so what? I said, I should be her best friend, her partner, her life companion. Don't you think that if she had any problems, she should have talked to me first? Don't you think she should have come to me to sort things out? Instead, she goes to her friends, who apparently are such good and responsible people that they take her to places where she can sort out her feelings with other men. Men who apparently don't care that they're kissing another man's wife. Carol went pale. No, she turned very pale. It seemed like she suddenly lost her appetite. Somehow, Carol had unleashed my anger. She was just another foolish, so-called friend who decided to meddle in other people's affairs. Let me ask you something, Carol. Are you married? She shook her head no. Have you ever been married? Another shake. Do you have a degree in counseling? No. So what gives you the right to advise someone about marriage? You've never been married, so how would you know what it's like? What gives you the right to meddle in someone else's marriage? She gasped. But I'm her friend. Hmm, not from where I'm sitting. How many times have you talked to me? Once or twice, as far as I remember. I've been married to Linda for 15 years, but when have you ever taken the time in your life to meet, talk, and get to know the man and partner of your friend? I've been in her life for 15 years, so I know her like no one else does. You talk about giving advice, you talk about helping her get through this, but what the hell do you know about me, other than what Linda has told you from her perspective? I felt Carol was about to cry. I had reached her as best as I could. Now to convey the message through her to Linda. Carol. Linda told me how she felt. She wanted a divorce, she told me, and I quote. I don't love you anymore. Well, Carol, tell me. How am I supposed to respond to that? What possible argument can I make to say she's wrong? Well, she wanted the divorce. Why should I be unhappy, hoping she'll change her mind? I finished my drink. My food was half eaten, but I was done. I stood up and gave Carol one last look. I found that other women see something in me. My wife no longer does. She pushed me away. I didn't push her away. I'm not going to put my life on hold because my partner is confused and no longer wants me. I'm trying to move on. How she feels about that is her own affair. I'm no longer trying to convince her or tell her what she should feel. Now, I can accept that. With that final statement, I left before Carol could say anything else. I knew that as soon as I exited the restaurant, she would be on the phone with Linda. At that moment, I had something to think about. That evening, I was going to meet Janet. Things went very well with Janet. She was different from the others. She was a younger black woman, very beautiful and very attractive. We were very polite and formal when she first joined our company, but a few months later, there was a moment when I was telling a rather spicy joke to some guys, and just as I reached the punchline, Janet walked into the room behind me. The men around me noticed her and held their breath as I turned to see her shocked face. I flashed her a rather mischievous smile and said, Admit it, that's really funny. She stood there for a moment with an expression that said, I can't believe this white guy just said that to me, then burst out laughing along with me. From that moment, she was one of the guys, but by the end of my date with her, she was all woman. Janet allowed me to go further than I had on other dates, and at the very last moment, I was the one who declined her offer to stay the night. As much as I wanted to, there were issues with Linda that needed to be resolved before I could sleep with another woman. Frank, Linda asked as I settled into bed. Yes. Frank, I need you to take a shower. Why? 
It was dark. The light was off, but Linda's voice was breaking. I could hear her sobbing. Please, Frank, if you don't take a shower, then I'll have to ask you to go sleep in the guest room. I was confused. What's happening? I turned on the bedside lamp and saw my wife. Her face was red, and her eyes were moist. She couldn't look me in the eyes. Please, Frank, you can come back to our bed, but I'm asking you, please take a shower. What's wrong? I always shower in the mornings, honey, you know that. She turned away from me. She turned her entire body away. You smell like her. Oh. I smelled like Janet. Yes. I got out of bed. I felt awful. I looked at her. She was still turned away from me. I'm sorry. I didn't realize. Listen, if you want me to go to the guest room, I can do that. No, she sobbed. I want you to come back to our bed. I just. Frank, I can't stand the smell of someone else on you. I just can't. I'm sorry. I want you in our bed. It's bad enough knowing that you're seeing others. I. I can pretend you're out with the guys. I can ignore my friends telling me who they've seen you with. I could even meet someone like that girl Heather and tell myself you're just friends. But now I know. I can smell her on you. I can tell. I. I want you to come back to our bed, but only after you take a shower. I can't stand her scent on you. I walked over to her side of the bed. I didn't linger. I leaned down and kissed her forehead. I'm sorry. I was inconsiderate. Let me take a shower and I'll come back to our bed. The next morning was Saturday and I slept in. It had been a long week for me. Going out every night, I felt my age. I hoped I wouldn't come down with a cold or something. Linda woke me up with breakfast. Then she asked me what my plans were. I don't have anything planned for the weekend, I told her. Frank. I was still sitting at the kitchen table. What? Frank. She reached into her pocket and pulled something out. She came over to me and knelt down in front of me. She opened her hand, and inside I saw my wedding ring. Grabbing my hand, she looked up at me. Frank, I want to work on our marriage. I think maybe I didn't think everything through. She carefully started sliding the ring onto my finger. I let her. I still love you. She remained kneeling, waiting for me to say something. Finally, I spoke. Do you really feel that way? She nodded. No divorce? She nodded vigorously. What about other men? There's no one else but you. There it was. Now came the most delicate part. You all might think I'm crazy for this, but I went ahead anyway. You need to understand that I will still occasionally see other women. Linda swallowed. We sat like that for a long time. Our eyes met. Throughout this process, I learned something about my wife. I was confident about the outcome. Finally, she nodded. I suppose I shouldn't be surprised, she said. I think I'm in love with you too, I told her. I grabbed her and kissed her. I kissed her passionately. She kissed me back. As it turned out, Linda had low self-esteem. I treated her well. Well, not entirely so. Over the years, we had drifted apart. My biggest mistake was not acknowledging her feelings. Every time she shared her feelings, I argued with her. Do you know how harmful that is? How arrogant it is for someone to tell another person that what they feel is not true. All it did was build up resentment and hostility towards me. Over time, I pushed her to the point where she no longer valued what she had. Actually, maybe it's my fault, but over time we changed. Well, she changed, I never change. So why would I want to go back to the way I was before? I took a guess. She wanted me to go back, but we both had changed. Now she knew that there were others behind the scenes, ready to replace her if she decided to go her own way. Do you really have to see other people? She whimpered. I'm not planning to see other men. I looked at her and smiled. Yes, I will do that from time to time. You may be my wife, but I am your husband. Remember that, and I won't forget about you. She smiled. Yes, she smiled. Take me to bed and show me what I've been missing. Show me what all these other girls got from you. Do you think you have what I need? I asked. I'll just show you my love and, maybe, wear you out so much that you won't have energy for any other woman. I picked her up and carried her to the bedroom. I set her down on the bed, and we both removed our clothes with a sense of urgency that was almost frantic. Our lust and passion exploded as I took her. Then she took me, and then she took me again. Somewhere along the way, she realized from my stamina that I hadn't slept with any of the other women. After 15 years, my wife knows what I can do in bed. For the rest of the day, she had a knowing smile. I kept silent. What happened on my dates was a topic I did not bring up. Neither did she. It was an episode in our life that was best left in the past. From then on, I no longer asked her about the men she had kissed and talked to. My wife now looks at me with a certain degree of reverence and respect.
I would never have believed that my plan would work. It wasn't a very good plan. Initially, I was just too stubborn to give her the satisfaction of seeing her destroy her husband with her hurtful words and request for a divorce. When I saw how she reacted and accepted that I was seeing other women while she stayed at home waiting for me, I pushed my plan further. I won her back by distancing myself from her. What you don't have, you want the most. What you have, you want the least. Those are the words I live by now. By freeing both her and myself, we are now more together than before. So, am I seeing others? I haven't had to yet. The first sign that Linda is reverting to her old self will lead to my next date. I know this. She knows this, and together we work to not just listen to each other, but to truly hear. Thank you for being with us and listening until the end. If you found it interesting, please subscribe, give us a like, and leave your comments. And we'll see you on the Cheating Secrets channel.